Uh, Asantoa is a lot of things, um, but she is a poet, a writer, a designer, a communication strategist, sometimes a leader, um, but she's a believer in Ghana. I, I think that the, the thing that stands out about me is actually my multiplicity. It is that I am, um, you would, I stray from using the term jack of all trades because the full meaning is actually jack of all trades, master of none. But I think what stands out about my personality as a creative is my multiplicity. Anybody who knows my craft well enough or who has been following me knows that I am not only a poet, I am not only a writer, I'm not only a singer, I'm not only a designer, I am all these things at different times. So that's, that's the thing that stands out about me. I think, I wouldn't necessarily use the word confidence, but I think it's what comes naturally to me. This is who I am. Um, I have always been interested in writing as a kid, even before I knew that writing was a career. I have always been interested in poetry. I've always been interested in visual design. Um, I've always been interested in community, in the creative community. And, and so I think consistency is what has given me the confidence to call myself a creative. Consistency in doing all of these things has given me the confidence to say I am a creative because I have the work to show for it. I have evidence that I have been doing this for a while. So it gives me the confidence to say I am a creative. I don't think that as a child I knew this is what I wanted to do. Um, but I would say that my parents nurtured me and my siblings um, to tap into our creativity um, because I, we had a library in our house. I was reading books um, all the time. I was drawing, my mother paints. I was drawing, I was doing all that all the time. We were singing at home. Um, so I think my creative abilities were nurtured at home, but it wasn't nurtured necessarily in the direction of she's going to be a creative. It was nurtured because naturally my parents themselves are inclined towards art and so it was part of their upbringing, it was part of my upbringing as a child. Um, so I definitely don't think as a child I knew that this is what I wanted to be. I'm one of those Ghanaian children when they asked as a young girl what do you want to do, I said doctor. Um, so <laughs> I don't think that it, I would be honest if I said that as a child, I knew that I was going to be a creative. Um, yeah. I personally think that Ghanaians are some of the most creative people on the earth, not even the continent. Um, but I think that, again, it's, it's not enough to just be creative in your own small corner. It is the structure of the creative industry, even if we can even call it that, that makes it such that people look for inspiration elsewhere. Like if I tell you that, oh, one of my inspirations is Toni Morrison, it's because that Toni Morrison is well published well-known, everywhere if I search online, I can have access to her work. But if I tell you about a singer who you may not have heard of at all, but is a Ghanaian and she has done the work, she doesn't have that kind of exposure. She doesn't have that kind of systems to expose other Ghanaians to it. And so I think it's really our ecosystem, the creative ecosystem that is not well-built at all, but there are creatives in Ghana. I think we need to invest um, in creating a functional ecosystem. And when I say we, I really think it is the job of the government. I think it is the job of the people who have access to the entire country to create it. Um, because it's just like, you know, for instance, if I was a doctor and I said, I think that we need a communal hospital, or I think we need a central hospital in each region. It, it shouldn't be up to the citizens to say, okay, let's create a, a hospital in each region that is well equipped such that nobody has to go to one main hospital. And that's the same thing that has to be done for the creative industry. It, it has to be up to the government to create those structures so that we can nurture the art such that everybody in Ghana has access to our own local arts. Because even people in Ghana don't know the local artists, how much more outside. Um, so I think it's really up to 
the governing body of, of Ghana to create an ecosystem that is beneficial for every artist. Um, so for instance, if I as an artist, I know that I can multitask as an individual and as somebody who can create some kind of platform, that's because I know my strengths. I know that I can, for instance, every year I can create an album or a body of work. At the same time, I can create a journal or a magazine that caters to young writers. That's what I can do. Um, so I think it's really up to each individual artist. It's hard to say every artist do this, every writer do this. You can't put them in charge of something that should be structural. It's hard to do that. Um, but one of the things I really, really want to see more Ghanaian artists, whether you're a singer, writer, poet, rapper, do is to be invested in their communities. I think I have such a big problem with this that I feel like Ghanaian artists, we just, we just talk, but we don't do, right? Like, when I say people need to be invested in their communities, if, for instance, you believe that um, we all have to, like all, all children should have access to education, right? What are you as an artist doing to make that? I'm not saying go and build schools, but even just in your own community, there are five families living there and maybe there's one family who can't. What can you, maybe you can create a small syllabus or you can do this and share it online or you can lend a hand. It doesn't have to be something that we are always like documenting online, telling people I want to do this, et cetera, et cetera. But like we need to be, what in your physical environment is happening that you are aware of? And most artists are not even aware of their physical environment, or if they are aware of it, they are not doing anything to contribute to that community. All they do is maybe they talk about it in their rap and then that's it. But I think that we need to be involved in the community. We need to physically be involved in our communities. Yeah. I started Yobins five years ago. It's both surreal and exciting to know that Yobins is five years old. Um, I remember starting Yobins in, in when I was 27 and being very timid about starting it because by then I was looking around and the only prominent for, for, for somebody who was always on the internet, the only prominent card company that I knew of was Hallmark. And I was thinking, what makes you think you can compete with Hallmark? But at the same time, I knew that as a Ghanaian, I wanted something I could relate to. I wanted a card that spoke to me, my peculiarities, the things that were happening in my community, in my country. I wanted that. And I didn't see that in the cards, Present. And so I decided I, we have to, I have to create this. And so I called two friends and I, I, I think at the very beginning we had only four designs, four cards, we started it. And that's, that's how Yobin started, with just four cards. The first four cards, so like when I was creating um, Yobins, I was, I was trying to target Valentine's Day, but I missed my deadline and I think we released somewhere around June, July. But the first four cards were laugh themed. And so I did a mixture of, of, of pigeon because I, I kept telling myself this youth generation are interested, like we've tweaked our own English and so we need, it has to be relevant in our work. So it was a pigeon poem and just the, sometimes just like going on Twitter, seeing how people were relating to funny things, the things that were trending, just having all that in mind to create the cards. And that's how the four designs started. My mantra or something that I, I, I used to encourage myself and the people around me is just three letter, a three word phrase, all is well, all is well, all will be well, no matter what happens, no matter what is yet to happen, or no matter what you're currently going through, all is well. They need me to be broken before they listen. They need me to give a token before they call me Christian. They need me to rhyme before I can be a poet. They need me to be in sublime before I can make the budget. They need me to spit metaphors before I can be a rapper. They need me to be on all fours before they can come. They need me to be a penis before I can come. I am Poetra Santoa and I am a brave woman.